In this video, we're just going to have a look at some of the things that you may or may not know about Fluent Forms. I've installed the free version and I'm now going to head over here to the contact form demo. So we'll edit that and we're going to head over to the standard form layout. And right here we have the standard form. Now, one of the fields that you'll immediately see here is the subject field. And normally it's almost like, well, what do you put in the subject field? If I want to get feedback, why must I put in a subject? I'll just put in my message. I'm not going to put in a subject. So you might want to pre-fill that if that field is important to you. So one of the ways of doing that then is to click on the pencil. And then what we do is we head over to the advanced options. And over here, we're going to add the, a default value. So send me more information on. Now, uh, I don't know what the page title is going to be, so I'd like to get that dynamically. And that's quite easy to do because I'm going to head over to these three dots. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to scroll down until I see embed post page title. And I'm going to save my form. Now, when I go and have a look at the um, preview and design, you will see that it pulls in home. So whatever page I'm on, that is what will appear in that space. But there's another way of uh, doing this with the same um, field, but with a slight twist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm not going to call it a subject field. Um, I'm actually going to hide the label. And now what I'm going to do is head over to the advanced options. And you'll see we have this prefix label here. And I'm going to say... Um, send me more details about right that's what i'm going to do there and then the default value i'm going to leave as just the dynamic title and i'm going to save that form and then we're going to preview that design and you'll see now that instead of having a subject field, which feels kind of dated and old and irrelevant, we now have send me more details about, and we simply have the, the post or page title dynamically into that space. So that's the before, and that would be the after. So I prefer the second one. Um, if the user isn't happy with that, it's quite easy for them just to select that then and type in what they want. Whereas over here, um, they might try and just delete whatever's in that space. So just um, this would make it a little bit more interesting for the user. Uh, something else that you may not be aware of then is also if we then go and have a look at the URL field. So let's go to the um, website URL. And you'll see that if I just um, save the form, I'm going to preview, and you want to get somebody's website address. Um, I'm going to put in my website address. <clears throat> and when I hit submit form, please enter a URL. Now, a lot of people might think that oh, that just means I must add the www. So, no. So what do you want from me to submit? Right. Quite easy then. Um, first of all, what we'll do is we'll change that error message. Um, instead of saying the field must contain a valid URL, prefix your website address with HTTPS. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it then is to actually pre-fill that field with the HTTPS. So I'm going to go to the default value and pre-fill with those values already and in the help message um, please prefix with and we'll see which of these is going to be most effective we'll save the form we'll preview and design and there we have the um, the field now you'll see now that the information about how to pre-fill is in this little eye. And I'm afraid that on mobile, I don't think that's really going to be um, a viable solution. 
um, it's a very small eye to try and tap with your finger. Um, so I would eliminate that immediately. The idea here is great because immediately I'm just typing in my website address and I know that it's going to work. So that's a really cool way of doing it. I think that's going to be the best way to do it. And the other way, of course, is that when I hit submit and there's an error, it now says, uh, please enter a URL, which is not the message we wanted to show. Let's just go back here. So here's our form and the message the help message is please prefix with and that's the dynamic and let's head back here maybe we missed something no the error message is prefix your website address with https so i'm going to save that again preview and design And you'll see that the error message we get here is please enter a URL. So it's not even picking up the error message that we would like it to um, in this one. It's just please enter a URL. So perhaps the best way to do it then is to prefix with the HTTPS. And then in the name, um, include... in the url and that might be the only way then the best way of doing that that way when it loads up url include a in the url and there it is already prefixed because the error message that we've um, requested uh, is not going to be displayed by the looks of things so that error message actually um is is not applied so i'm not sure why that is probably something to do uh, with the form uh, right the next thing that i want to move on to then is we look at the input fields uh, one of the things you might want to do is have a checkbox so you'll have this checkbox field and as you know when it comes to mobile these little boxes here are really difficult to get to uh, very frustrating and actually quite annoying when you see them. So a nice quick way to fix that is just to go into the edit for that particular field. And now what we're going to do is change the display. So what you need to do is go to advanced options and over here where it says layout, hit the drop down. And the only layout style that you really want to use is going to be the button style. So I'm just going to head over here and add another checkbox field so you can see the difference. We'll save that form, we'll preview and design, and now you'll see that on mobile, this is really easy because I can just click and select or deselect. Whereas on mobile, you've got these three items, but really um, too close together. So I recommend changing it on mobile or even on desktop to the button it's just so much easier and and it gives you more space to do what you need to do um, the other application that uses something similar then is the radio field so when you add the radio field um, you've got yes no uh, let's add another one so right now you want to add another one and you can see here uh, maybe um, if you've got a lot of fields to add, what's really great is this bulk edit. You can simply select that um, yes, no, maybe. And here you can see the format for um, the value and the label. So maybe always. Right. We'll just confirm that. And now you'll see with the bullet you have the same issue um let's save the form preview and design and you've got these horrible check boxes 
um, or bullet feel. So and the way to get rid of that then is to also go to advanced, head over to your layout and also change that to button styles. We save that form, preview and design. And now you'll see that instead of having these um, normal bullets, you can now yes and you'll see that the functionality is built straight in. Really easy to use and set up. So you can go from a field, a form with those fields to something uh, a lot more attractive. Um, and if we were to look at this in a mobile setting, and I'm just going to quickly do this. Right, if this was obviously the mobile view, um, you can see here that it's much easier than to select uh, if that was your finger space is much more than these that are so compressed on top of each other and the same um, would apply here um, and then just something else to look at that we saw before is we had a look at this prefixed uh, message so on desktop it looked like send me more details about and then on mobile send me more details about and then that would obviously contain the details uh, that we wanted to contain. Um, in this case, it's the page title, which is dynamically generated. Um, the URL, pretty much the same. If I hit Submit Form, um, let me see what happens. You can't even see the error message now because it's defaulting to that field. And of course, it's bringing up a whole lot of um, URL. So yeah not really going to work for me so i think the best thing to do here is to go with include http in the url and then also pre-fill that field much easier check boxes are buttons no longer the tick box radio fields are also buttons no longer the tick box so easy to do right within fluent form so that'll save you a bit of time um, and then, of course, the other thing when it comes to um, updating the checkbox field, you can also use the bulk option here. So you can. So what's great is now I can and simply confirm, and there I have those items. Save my form, preview and design, and now with the buttons, they've been added. Uh, or should be added to those fields. So let's just save that again. And let's preview. Checkbox fields aren't displaying as they should. So I'm going to head back here. Advanced options. Uh, that's because I've only changed them on this field. What's nice now is that I can just copy that, head over here, paste it in, and there we have those items straight away. So it uh, makes it so much quicker when you're doing checkbox fields. Right, the other thing that you can do with the checkbox field, of course, is you have um, access, and this applies to the bullet list as well is you can do all these kinds of things immediately. So I'm going to remove that. And the nice thing now is um, maybe I want to do days of the week. Um, maybe I want to do education. Maybe I want to do a job type, employment, um, marital status. So let's say we're going to go with employment. We'll confirm. We'll save the form. We'll preview and design. And there we have the employment with buttons. You don't get the drop down list, you only get that um, inline. Um, and already here you can see not making sense because it's not in alphabetical order. What's nice though is that I can quickly head back here and I can simply drag and drop these. So I can quickly. Um, and if that's just too complicated, then of course you can come in here. 
and just quickly rearrange these if there aren't too many and that one can come out there so employment full-time part-time not employed let's do that prefer retired students self-employed confirm save the form preview and design and there you have your employment and then you have it in alphabetical order so employed full-time part-time homemaker not employed prefer not to answer retired student self-employed so much easier then to follow what's um, required and of course um, the clicks work quite easily right um, and then the same thing would apply here for the radio field you can also go to bulk edit and you have the same options in this case i can only live perhaps currently i'm on one continent so let's go there and you'll see it's already in um, alphabetical order and if we preview and design you'll see that we have the fields and they do work as they should so that's um, what's really nice. Um, also, it takes up a lot less space. And if we look at that on mobile, let's go to preview only. It would be nice if there was a mobile preview button. Um, no, there's no dragging to resize. So we'll just uh, do it this way. And if we scroll down, you will see that on mobile, you get this really nice layout for your fields. So that's um, something that you should know then about the checkbox and the radio fields. And just some, um, uh, if you're looking for some feedback from a client, one of the ideas would be is to use a text field. So we'll just go with a simple text and we're gonna use the prefix again. And you might wanna know how they're gonna use your product so i use this two maybe you don't even need the two uh the the colon so now what will happen is that when it comes to getting feedback instead of saying how do you use our product which would be the traditional way so that would look something like um text um do you use our product now what we do is by doing the preview and design here, you'll see how much easier it is. I use this to make stuff at home. Where's yeah? How do you use our product? Now I use it to. So you'll see that it already cuts down on the amount of time somebody um, needs to actually fill in what um, the feedback that you want so this is a little bit more conversational so you might get a better response um, you might do the same thing um, maybe you want um, maybe it's a support form and then you could have i would like to know how to and now when we preview then you would see i would like to know how to and simply complete the sentence and if i inspect that on mobile then i would like to know how to and just carry on with the sentence in as opposed to how do you use our product or what help how do you need help what help do you need you simply put that into a nice conversational piece so that's a nice way that you can use the forms to do that and once you've added in your um, prefix then always a good idea then to hide the label so that that doesn't confuse anybody any further so if we open that up then you'll see i would like to know how to and it just becomes part of the conversation so now if we were to look at our form and we remove those and we remove those Right, and we just have this new layout. I'm going to save that. 
Let's do that. Let's preview the design. And now you'll see that you have a far nicer looking form. All right, send me more details about. I would like to know how to. Um, and then we have those bullet points. Now, something that you might want to, and I'm going to do on this one, um, is I'm just going to remove that. And then I'm also going to remove. the subject All right so that's our form and I'm going to save that and let's just preview that so now the form is send me more details about I don't have to fill that in it's already filled in for me um, the URL already has an indication of what I need to fill in so that's great and then I have my select fields and I also have these bulleted fields and I would like to know how to do stuff. Okay, now let's just have a look at that in mobile. It is still um, quite busy and we do need to do some color updates here um, just to make this look a little bit nicer. But let's just preview only and now let's do that on mobile. And you'll see now that on the mobile form, it's a lot easier to read. Send me more details about. I don't have to do anything there. I know how to fill in the URL. I can simply select the radio fields. I can simply select as well. I would like to know how to do stuff. And then I can submit the form. So now I have a much nicer mobile experience as well for my user and the more people enjoy what they're doing the more they're going to respond so by doing it this way you'll get a better response from the customer as well if i have a look here at the um, formatting and what's available uh, you know maybe you want to add some color well there's no um, color option available here so let's go to preview and design so here we are in the preview and design field, but that's only available um, in the pro version. So I'm not able to change the colors here. However, you can manually do some updates to that. Uh, it does require knowing a little bit of CSS, but uh, you can do that the good old fashioned way. Just something else that you might then want to consider when it comes to some of the other aspects of the form. So that's just a few quick ways to make your forms look a little bit nicer and a bit more inviting. Something else though that you can do here under settings and integration is you can also make a far more interesting um, experience for the user. So when they've filled in a form, they're gonna, a message is gonna pop up and it'll say, thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. And that's great. Um, but you can make it far more interesting. So what we can do here is take that away and say hi. And let's add the short code for the first name. So these now are the fields that we have on our website. So immediately I can say hi, first name. Uh, thank you for completing. The form. Um, somebody from somebody will contact you regarding how uh, to. And over here, for example, we could head over to that short code. And I can't remember the name. And I'll show you now how. We can fix this where you're looking at these fields and you're thinking, I don't know which field it is. Now I know it's an input field. Um, now we know that the one was the subject. So that has subject in the name and the other one was just a text input. So it's probably this one and full stop. And yeah, we might just say kind of God or chat soon. Something like that. Now, um, uh, you might have something like we see 
you're interested in and you might then want to go to the um, let's go with the checkbox field all right so let's um, save those settings so you'll see we have this much more interactive um, option so now when we head over to the editor and we're going to go to um, preview and design um, we're just going to fill in this form so I'm just going to uh, fill in what needs to be filled in that's about it um, and then here I'm going to add a few things I would like to know how to um, do a to build a house right and I'm going to submit that form let's see if the preview shows yeah so now hi Bruce thank you for completing the form we see you're interested in boom 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 somebody will contact you regarding how to build a house so there I have a, a far more interesting response on the website um, for the person who just completed the form and I get the impression that uh, they would have received the message from this and I didn't just say thank you for your form but by repeating what I've said kind of creates a bit of a human contact and becomes part of the conversation so that's one way then to engage the user a bit more another thing to look at um, you'll see earlier it was like okay now which text field was it so if we go down to this last one um, we know that this was the uh, text input field and it had the prefix label I would like to know how to but there's nothing here to show what it is what you can do is just copy that and then here where it's got input under text maybe what you want to do is change that to just paste that in you'll see it puts the underscores in I would like to know how to now I know that that is that text input field so maybe I want to leave that text input as would like to know how to um, these radio fields we can change that to um, uh, what continent and then under advanced options instead of saying input radio we can say okay input radio continent and then when it comes to the employment what we'll do then under advanced options is checkbox underscore employment right we'll save that form and now when we head back to our settings and integration and if we look at our reply message here what you'll notice is now when I add a short code we see you're interested in okay, you live in and now you'll see that it's a far more descriptive idea so what continent right. so now and now you'll see that the message is coming together really nicely and with those hints to the field names instead of just having input text or text input we can see here right text input and it's um, I would like to know how to so I can now allocate the right field in the right space okay another thing that you could do if you wanted to um, summary of the form submitted you could do that as well and there we would just select all data and we'll save the settings and let's just head back to the editor preview and design and let's submit another form so let's just do that and we need to fill in all these things quickly and how to swim the ocean and we'll submit the form and you'll see now we have this hi thank you for completing the form uh, you are interested in you live in asia um obviously didn't do uh didn't fill in that field um chat soon but we can also include then the summary of the form so here we have everything that the user submitted 
So that's another um, way just to let them know, right, you got it. So on, submit on submitting, you can either do a nice friendly interactive chat or you could just replicate the form on the page. Um, and then obviously then we also want to make these forms compulsory if we're going to use them in a conversation. So what we need to do is make sure that they are ticked as required. Um, this I don't really need anymore, um, so I'm not going to make that required. All right, so there we have the new form, and simply head over here, put in the details. Um, these are compulsory now, so I am employed part time, I'm retired, and I'm also a student and I live in Antarctica, how to keep warm. I'm going to submit the form. So thank you for completing the form. We see you're interested in, and now you suddenly see that um, the interests aren't being listed, even though um, I selected them. Uh, the interest uh, you live in Antarctica, but this checkbox field isn't coming up, my employment. So that would just be a case of allocating the right field again. So we head over to settings and integration. So when you make changes to the field names, it's important that you obviously update here. So you're interested in, and you'll see that's not working anymore. And so obviously we have to head over here and look for um, okay that was the employment see your currently employed as that'll work now so we've just got to make sure that these updates that we've made are the same as what we have on the form after making the updates um, somebody will contact you regarding and we know that that input text will be wrong now so it will be there we go and by including the name in the field here you get a clue to i would like to know how to um, that's the continent that's the employment Hi, uh, thank you for completing the form regarding and there what we might want to do is include that subject that's no longer a subject so we know that that's the field and now we'll save the settings head over to editor and now when we um, head over to preview and design and we um, we filled in all the fields and this time I'll live in Australia I want to know how to um, cross the ocean I'm going to submit the form and now you'll see thank you for your thank you for completing the form regarding home that was on the home page we see you are currently employed as you live in Australia, somebody will contact you regarding how to cross the ocean, chat soon. So a nice friendly message, right? The spacing that comes in here is um, automatic, not much that I can do about it, but what we can do, and you'll kind of learn how the, the forms display, what we can do then is just use different spacing there. So We'll just do that. Right, so that's that's how we can update that screen that you see straight after submitting the form. So I quite like the conversation, and I'm not crazy about all the data being displayed, but I like the idea of the, the chat soon. Right, so the only thing we need to do then is have a look here, and I think everything else is looking fine. So we'll just add in a full stop there. And thank you for completing the form. Um, 
on the page. Right. Okay. So we're going to save that. Now what we're going to do is just have a look at what we can do with email notifications. Um, right. So when you create a form, there's no notifications and you can now create the notifications you want. So a new notification. So once again here, um, somebody um, completes the form. What's the send to email? Uh, you can either enter the email manually or select a field. And in this case, we're just going to send it back to the email field that was in the form. So we just select email. The subject now, once again, you can create yourself. So we can say inquiry. Um, thank you. And you'll see now I can put in for your inquiry regarding Um, now here it's not pulling in the name of the fields as we updated them so you just need to remember that was submit and you'll see here that it just says text input for the last one even though we did make some updates and changes and I can show you um, why that is. So I'm going to save that notification and what I'm going to do is just in the editor open up the form and what we need to change then is in this particular field we need to just change that text input to I would like to know how to so so now when we head back, you'll see that the title for that form now will be the title that's going to be included now in our email notification. So head over to email notifications. Yeah, I thought I had saved that. All right, to add the notification, we're just going to make that um, select a field and it's only the email field and um, uh, your, um, hi, first name, um, inquiry regarding how to, and now you'll see when I scroll down, I would like to know how to. Right, so there we have our input name and an inquiry regarding how to and now we can go hi first name and once again uh, we were excited to see that you want to and here we would say what the person would like to do um, our agent for and here we can include um, the name of the continent so we'll contact you soon and here um, we do have jobs available as requested And here I'm just going to um, check books field. So that was employment, and then right. And now that we've got that, um, uh, looking forward to working with you um the team and then we can go now what we might want to do is include all the data because this is the email that goes back to the customer so we say all data so now we've created our feedback field and we've created a conversation with the details so we're trying to say hey we get it we understand 
um, and we're opening up a dialog. At the bottom here, under advanced, what you might want to do, um, I'm not going to look at the any conditional logic right now. So here we have the from name. So in this case, the name will be first name space last name. The from email address. Now, generally, this needs to be the email address of the website. So, um, so that would be info at must have if that was the email address of the website and that's just really to eliminate spam spamming issues um please use your domain's email so in this case if the domain was must have um as you can see then it's must have the reply to address though would be the reply to the customer so we're going to reply to the email address and you might bcc or cc but now you're going to realize that hang on a second um we're going to reply to the customer it's from the email that means that the to address uh -huh, the to address must be the email address of the website and not the address of the customer otherwise the customer gets the response in this case we're sending the if if you want to send the address to admin that must be admin alternatively email to the client sorry this one is going to the client i'm getting a bit ahead of myself um so the reply to email address is also going to be the email address of the website so the person the customer is going to receive this and it will save um from name and the from name then will be the website must have name um, and we might say regarding re and well it's just the website name so maybe we can just leave it like that okay and then we have the from email and the reply to we save the notification and then we can create an admin notification which is a little bit different and here we enter the email address so info uh, must have um, subject um, so inquiry from first name last name and we'll just put a dash and then um, i would like to know how to hi admin um new message uh, on the website and enter and here we're just going to include um the complete form so what we'll do here is we'll just scroll down here until we see all data. So let me just scroll down here and eventually we should have one here that uh, I'm in the wrong place. So I'm in that list. I need to be in this list. That's better. And then all data so here we're going to say hi admin uh, a new message from the website and that's all the data and we can also then just say uh, maybe we want to know what um, page it came from so here we are here on this and maybe we just want to include the URL um, page title and then we'll also include the post permalink right so that's just what the admin will get and the other one will be what the customer gets so we say to info now here we're going to say from name now in this case we're starting to use the first name we'll use the last name and we'll just put a dash we don't have to do a dash. We can just go first name, last name, and then the from email in this case will be the website. 
once again, it's the same at must have a and then the reply to in this case is now going to be the customer's email address so we now put that email address as the reply to and now we can save that notification so there will be two notifications that run um, and now you'll say but which one is which and the nice thing then is that we can just change this to customer save that notification and the second one, we'll just change that to admin. Right. Um, the other thing to look at quickly is there are some conditional logic things that you can do, but that's going to be for um, the premium version as well as the media file attachments. But there's still a whole lot here. There's a whole lot going on um, anyway. So we've got the confirmation on the website after filling in the form then we've got the two notifications and you can pull in the data from the form and create conversations which is really cool um, we have some other confirmations but uh, we're not going to have a look at any more of these uh, and that's also a pro add-on so let's head back to the form and um, just one other thing that i noticed that we might want to change and um, that was, I think, on the checkbox field. You'll see it just says checkbox field there. And we're just going to say um, employment. So it's good to make sure that these labels are updated because when you work with the fields later on, those are the labels that you're going to see. Right. Let's preview this and just do a quick run through and let's see if those emails fire off so there we have the uh, the url dum, dum, da -dum. well let's not do that um, and i'm now in north america i would like to know how to uh, let's just say climb mountains I'm going to submit the form and we'll just view that email Love it. and we'll view that email. So now I've submitted the form and we don't need that and we don't need that. We don't need that. Right. So this is the admin form. Hi admin, new message from the website. Boom, boom, boom. You'll see very um, to the point and it's inquiry from who's it from. To, to climb mountains so um yeah um very cool and if i reply the reply to address then is the correct email address so that works really great and then the other email was the email to the customer and you'll see uh, how we're excited that you want to climb mountains our agent for north america will contact you soon we do have jobs available as requested Looking forward to working with you from the team. And then there's just a summary of the information that I submitted. So this is a far more conversational, more interesting uh, response via email. And let's just uh, close that. And then if we look at the website, you'll see that, um, hi Bruce, thank you for completing the form on the homepage. We see you're currently employed as you live in North America. Somebody will contact you regarding how to climb mountains so right that's just um, a few things that um, you can do with fluent forms to create a more conversational um, kind of workflow uh, conversation and also um, if people enjoy the form they'll enjoy completing the form if it's too admin related um, and too hard with too many sharp edges they're not going to be interested but by softening the way that the questions are asked um, you kind of lead them into a conversation and um, they'll be a little bit more inclined to give you more helpful information. Um, yeah, so that's just a couple of things that I thought you might want to know about Fluent Forms and putting some things together. Um, if we look at the entries, you'll see that the entries that we've submitted are here. Um, and what's also nice is that when you uh, just go in and have a look at them, 
and you get a lot of nice information from Fluent Forms. And this is the free version. But already I can see things like the IP address, the source, the browser, just some technical details. And then over here, um, I've got all the information that was submitted in the form. I can add a note. And um, so that might just be maybe you want to remind yourself about something. This is the note. Um, and now they've already see, received the follow-up email, so I don't have to um, necessarily send them an email straight away because something's already been received. And then here is the submission log. And uh, we will get an error because the domain doesn't exist. Um, and I could always resend the email notification, but that's only available in Pro. But there you have it. That's, you know, that's a lot of stuff that you can do with Fluent Forms. Um, and this is still the free version. So I hope that gave you some ideas. So I just like to say, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. And thank you for watching.